Hey there, welcome back to Semtech channel. This is tutorial 3 on overhead line steady state operation. In this tutorial, we will be discussing the capacitive phasor diagram. So if you'd like to catch up on the previous tutorial on resistive and inductive phasor diagram, please watch tutorial 1 and 2, link in the description box. But before we move on with this tutorial, I'd like to clarify a few things based on the discussion on Simtech channel community posts. Great. So first off, this tutorial is based on the transmission of AC power. This is why we are discussing phasor diagram, phase angle, and so forth. Because in DC uh, power transmission, you will not have phase angle or phase shift. And why AC power transmission? Well, because we're discussing power system, steady state operation. And as we all know, all power system network transmission line around the world, I can safely say they are all done in alternating current, not in DC. And obviously, this particular circuit can be analyzed in context of DC analysis. If you plug in a DC power source here, you can run a transient or steady state operation of this particular circuit based on the resistive, capacitive, and inductive load. But that is not what we're doing here. We are analyzing a power system a transmission line operation, which is done in AC power alternating current and that is the case because nicolas tesla about 110 years ago or so won the argument against thomas edison on why use ac instead of dc because thomas edison was pushing the argument about dc power transmission dc system because at the time thomas edison had lots of uh, argument and invention around the dc power system while Nikola Tesla was doing experiment and inventions around AC power transmission. So at the end of the day, what was known as the war of current was eventually won by uh, Nikola's Tesla. This is why today we're transmitting our power using alternating current. Although Nikola Tesla won the war of current and we transmit power using AC, we still convert it back to DC for everyday use. So you can basically look around you when you plug your instrument, your tools, or your cell phone to a wall adapter. You basically have a charger that will convert AC power back to DC for everyday use. So in the end, Thomas Edison, he had a point, but it is practically impossible to transmit power efficiently in DC over a long distance. Well, that was the argument there and maybe uh, that argument is not so strong today because uh, the DC power transmission is coming back slowly, uh, not at the same uh, level as AC power transmission is today. But as technology evolves, we will start seeing uh, DC power transmission gaining more and more prominence in power system technology. But that's a subject for another tutorial. Let's get back to our steady state operation for transmission line uh, running at 50 or 60 hertz frequency because this circuit will also behave differently if you have a voltage source that is running at a higher frequency, right? So that will be very different if you supply a PWM signal at 100 kilohertz or 1 megahertz or so forth then the behavior will be very very different here but now we are running at low frequency because the inductance uh, as a load the impedance will be different depending on the frequency okay and the same applies for a capacitor now as we all know the inductive reactance and capacitive reactance they depend on the frequency of operation of the circuit in which they are operating okay so in a case of xl we know that xl is equal to 2 pi fl okay where these inductive reactants will depend on the value of the frequency and the inductance now if the inductance got a fixed value then at high frequency then this impedance is going to be high okay and at low frequency is also going to be low this is why in an ac circuit like this with 50 hertz operation your inductance will initially won't behave exactly like an open to effect the opposition 
to the current right there will be some current that will flow because of the low impedance that is dependent on the frequency of the transmission line the inductance will allow more current to flow in the circuit with the current basically lagging the voltage by 90 degrees as we've seen in the previous tutorial but now in the case of a capacitive load where xc is equal to 1 over 2 pi fc right in this case here the capacitive reactance also depend on the frequency and the capacitor obviously now if you've got a fixed capacitor then a low frequency of 50 hertz here is going to basically result in a high capacitive reactance compared if you have a high frequency circuit then your xc your capacitive reactance is going to be low if you have a high frequency right now here we're going to be dealing with a system that got a purely capacitive load in that case we're going to be having a situation where the capacitive uh, reactance is going to be significantly high depending on the value obviously of our capacitor because our frequency is now fixed at 50 hertz so in a high frequency situation the capacitive reactance will be extremely low and as a result this capacitor will initially behave like a short but in a low frequency system like this transmission line the capacitive reactance is going to be high and based on this there will be some current flow to try to charge this capacitor and this current will basically going to lead the voltage by an angle of 90 degrees so we're going to have a positive angle of the current compared to a lagging current in an inductive case so this is basically the difference between the two uh, relating to whether you are supplying a low frequency or a high frequency signal great now before we move forward please if you find this tutorial useful please make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe to simtech channel that will be highly appreciated and also if you'd like to join this channel membership to receive assistance for your assignment homework or project or whatever you are dealing in your electrical engineering journey simtech channel will be here to assist you great now we know that for a capacitive load for our short transmission line operation here we know that the current the load current here il is going to be leading the voltage by an angle here so it's basically a positive angle so we can now use this information with the information that we already know about the voltage drop across the transmission line okay we can now draw our capacitive phasor diagram so the solution to this uh, question is very simple we're going to start by the reference voltage which is basically v rec here with an angle of zero degree before the circuit breaker is closed because everything we basically discussing here will only take place after the circuit breaker have been closed okay so for a reference v rec with an angle of zero degree we now know that once the circuit breaker is closed there will be a current that will basically lead the reference voltage by an angle so let's go ahead and draw that angle this is an unknown angle we can calculate it if we've got the values okay now that we know where the location of that angle is we can then calculate the magnitude of our current of the load current okay then we can go ahead and draw the load current phasor okay now we've got the load current phasor which is leading by theta l the reference voltage v rec now once the circuit breaker have been closed and we've got the current that's leading the voltage by an angle the next thing that will happen there will be some situation that will start to develop here at the transmission line right the first situation will be vr the voltage across the resistance of the cable is going to be in phase with this current il which is the same current as i send okay so that voltage will be in phase with il that will be vr okay and we also know that there will be another voltage that will develop across uh, xl the inductive reactance of the line and that voltage is going to lead 
VR here by an angle of 90 degrees. And the algebraic sum of these two phases, VL and VR, that basically what would be our VZ, the voltage drop across the transmission line VZ. And this voltage drop has an angle theta Z that we can actually calculate and reference here to draw the phasor of VZ at theta Z. Okay, so this now will be VZ, basically the voltage drop across the transmission line. But now we are almost done with drawing our phasor diagram. The next thing we need to do is now to make a projection or to basically draw the sending end voltage because we've got the receiving end voltage which is VREC at a reference of zero degree. Now we need the sending end voltage. We know that the sending end voltage is going to be slightly higher than the receiving end voltage. This is because of the power loss across the transmission line. So there is a voltage drop across the transmission line. That voltage drop must be deducted from the sending end voltage to get the receiving end voltage V rec. Now, if you want V send, then you can just add the V rec, V receiving plus V Z to get V sending. So now we got V receiving here that we've already plot and we've got the V Z here. So we can just make a, a phase sum of these two here by making a projection of V Z to the top of v reg here okay so to do that we're going to make a projection okay now we've done the vector sum of v reg vector and vz vector by combining them at the end of one another now even we start drawing the angle of v sending theta sending we can already make a projection where uh, v sending is going to end it's going to end there and that will already determine the angle theta send so this here will be v sending basically the sending and voltage and over here basically the angle between the sending and voltage and the load current that angle can also be calculated that basically going to be theta l minus the sending and angle then you're going to get this angle great so this is it guys for this tutorial on how to draw the phaser diagram for a short transmission line in steady state operation so tutorial one we did for resistive load tutorial two for inductive load now we're closing this series with capacitive load so i hope you found it useful and if you have please make sure you subscribe to simtech channel and give this tutorial a thumbs up stay tuned for more tutorial on AC power transmission line analysis. Until next time, cheers.